So my name <coughs> is Konstantin Shvachko. Uh, <coughs> uh, I'm presenting today um, um, a case study on a very popular uh, problem that uh, <coughs> was observed in Hadoop from uh, uh, very ancient, ancient times. Uh, I'm presenting uh, uh, <coughs> uh, with, with the co-author co uh, Jigen Sandar. So uh, we both, uh, Jigen and, uh, uh, and me uh, and I, uh, are, uh, were the founders of Alta Store and Alta Scale, uh, the startups. Uh, we recently joined OneDisk, and now <coughs> Jigen is uh, CTO and VP of Engineering there. And I'm a <coughs> uh, chief architect at OneDisk. So Jigen was uh, working with Hadoop at Yahoo. <coughs> Uh, working on performance and uh, operability of Hadoop. He has a great deal of experience in big data, uh, clouds, virtualization, uh, <coughs> network experience. I, I'm interested uh, in uh, uh, <coughs> data structures and algorithms for uh, distributed uh, large storage systems. And <coughs> uh, I started this. Uh, uh, new open source project, uh, which is a file system, which is called Rafa and file system. Uh, <coughs> uh, it's a file system that has both distributed uh, metadata and data, and it is hosted on Apache Extra. Uh, I've done a lot of things in uh, HDFS, so let's get started. <coughs> What's Apache do? So I used to ask uh, the question, who knows about Apache Hadoop? Now I reverted it, who doesn't know about Apache Hadoop? <coughs> That's good. So I'll be quick and brief uh, on that. I'll just introduce the terminology because we, we, we'll use it a lot uh, uh, <coughs> uh, later on. So um, the main thing is uh, the, 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 the lower la la layer of Hadoop is distributed file system. It's a reliable uh, distributed storage layer. <clears throat> Name node is uh, uh, the metadata server, which uh, serves, uh, which stores all the namespace information and provides block management for the file system. And the data is replicated on data nodes. Uh, <clears throat> Different data nodes have multiple replicas of blocks. MapReduce is a distributed computational framework, and uh, it's based on a simple uh, <coughs> computational model invented by Google. Um, the job tracker is uh, the, the analog of metadata service. It's, uh, it plays the central role on the MapReduce cluster. Uh, task trackers are the slaves of the MapReduce. They uh, <coughs> uh, directly run the tasks of, uh, and execute the jobs. So a little bit uh, about HBase. Um, uh, <coughs> HBase is a uh, key value storage system. It's distributed storage system. It is uh, uh, table-based, uh, table so uh, <coughs> it stores uh, tables, but the tables are very uh, loosely structured, don't have a strict, uh, <coughs> uh, strict schema. Um, rows can have arbitrary number of uh, uh, columns. Uh, <clears throat> the distributed nature of HBase is that it is it can be split into uh, into horizontally into uh, regions, and also it can be uh, split uh, vertically. If there is too many columns, then you have to split vertically, and uh, those uh, boundaries on which you split HBase uh, vertically are called column families. <clears throat> HBase can be considered as a distributed cache because it serves uh, its uh, caches uh, regions, uh, the pieces of the table uh, in RAM and then serves it uh, quickly uh, so that uh, applications and cons consumers of data from HBase uh, could do real-time <coughs> processing of that data. Um, so 
I'm sure everybody knows what MapReduce is, but <clears throat> I need to emphasize uh, some <clears throat> uh, some important points for for uh, this particular uh, presentation. So the main the main parts of MapReduce framework as a computational model is <clears throat> Mapper and Reduce. Basically, that's that's the only things uh, that uh, the user should define along, along with location of input and output data. Uh, <clears throat> the rest is taken care by the uh, framework itself. So the framework splits the input data into, uh, into, <clears throat> into parts and fits them into maps. Uh, maps produce, uh, <clears throat> transform that data, produce some results. <coughs> Uh, write them locally uh, on the drives. Uh, then there is a, a framework initiated shuffle phase, which uh, <clears throat> delivers the local results produced by maps to the reducers responsible for the particular uh, key types. And then reduce processes this, uh, reduces process uh, the data and output uh, usually again in distributed uh <clears throat> file system, uh, they output uh, in uh, uh, in parallel. So, by the way, this example uh, counts consonant and vowels in uh, in the words. <clears throat> uh, so, what's the problem? Many of you would uh, would say that well, with Hadoop, there is lots of problems. Well, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to address uh, just one that was standing uh, for a very long time. Uh, basically from Hadoop inception. Uh, it's uh, low CPU utilization uh, on, uh, on the Hadoop clusters. Uh, utilization, uh, IO utilization, for example, is not bad. You can write a simple uh, MapReduce job, you can use uh, uh, TestDF fast IO or very well-tuned TerraSort, and you will get uh, <clears throat> high IO utilization on the cluster. Network, network utilization, well, <clears throat> nobody complained about network utilization uh, <clears throat> in terms of Hadoop. There, of course, apparently problems in cloud stack with network, at least 10 of them. But with Hadoop, it's, it, it's designed to optimize on, uh, on the network. So <clears throat> first of all, the data is, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, the execution of tasks is shipped, is shipped uh, locally to the data, so there is no data transfer, uh, so there is no extensive transfer of input data. Uh, <clears throat> uh, block replication of three requires network, and uh, this is one, one, one of the things that uh, require uh, network traffic. Uh, it, re it requires two network uh, transfers because the first copy goes local to the same node and two are uh, into two different nodes. <coughs> uh, map writes uh, <coughs> transient output into local drive, so there's no traffic there. Uh, the shuffle is probably the uh, biggest part of the MapReduce framework that uh, produces a lot of network tra traffic because uh, reducers need to get information from all the mappers that ran, I mean, potentially all the mappers that ran, and get those parts that belong to this reducer and uh, <clears throat> uh, transfer that uh, to a single node. So there is a lot of cross-node traffic uh, on the shuffle phase. But the real pr problem is CPU utilization. Uh, it's usually low. <clears throat> and what we think is the, uh, it, are, are the main, uh, uh, the main um, reasons for low utilization is, first of all, IO uh, bound workloads. Uh, <clears throat> MapReduce uh, and Hadoop in general is a big data uh, problem, framework for solving big data problems. and. Uh, Big data means a lot of uh, a lot of data, right? So you need to read it in order to process. So that's why I/O bounded uh, workloads. On the other hand, there is a cluster provisioning uh, <clears throat> trade-off, <clears throat> and I'll talk about it a little bit later. What it means that uh, there is a trade-off be be between peak uh, peak load performance, 
you want to keep your cluster running uh, fast when the peak load heats. On the other hand, uh, <clears throat> that uh, lowers the average utilization when there is no uh, substantial traffic on the cluster. So have we ever seen, uh, I mean, is, it, is everything so bad? Have we ever seen uh, CPU intensive utilization? Of course we did. So uh, computation of Pi uh, has uh, virtually zero input and very little output data. It's a lot of computation. It's enormous amount of fast Fourier transforms uh, that compute uh, amazingly large, uh, large numbers and in the end give you, give you one digit after you know, months of com computation. So. <clears throat> Um, we have seen that when uh, Nicholas started the uh, uh, run of uh, his uh, record Pi computation, they literally heated up uh, the data center uh, <coughs> cluster and it reached some you know, critical levels at that point. So it was very interesting. But in reality, <coughs> uh, it doesn't happen a lot. Uh, computational problem, uh, <clears throat> uh, combinatorial problems are really uh, <clears throat> CPU consuming uh, jobs, but uh, how many <clears throat> of those jobs are, are we run? Do, do we run and uh, how often? Uh, well tuned third, uh, TerraSort is uh, CPU, is quite CPU intensive, so. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, again, when TerraSort uh, beat the record, uh, we have seen uh, a lot of CPU cycles consumed. Uh, in traditional databases, um, the solution to raise utilization of nodes is to, uh, is to use compression on the data. But um, major big clusters of Hadoop ha have uh, all the data compressed these days, and we still don't see uh, high, high CPU utilization. So again, production, production clusters run cold because of the two main reasons. First of all, they need to process a lot of information and most of the jobs are your bound. And the second reason is that <clears throat> uh, the workload is uh, different and production, uh, production cluster are bound with restrict SLAs. So it is, uh, so when you provision a cluster, you, you would rather think about, okay, this hardware will, will, will stay, uh, will st will stay uh, idle on average, but at peak times, uh, my website will not crash. So that's uh, basically uh, <clears throat> uh, explanation of that dilemma. So suppose that we have uh, 72 gigabyte RAM uh, per node. As a rule of thumb, don't, don't, don't uh, uh, follow the, this blindly, is that I would allocate four gigabyte per data node because it does a lot of transfers. I would uh, allocate two gigabyte per task tracker. If you run HBase on the same cluster, then it needs a lot of memory. So I say uh, 16 gigabytes. So, uh, I occupied how much? Uh, 22 gigabyte total, so 50 is remaining. Uh, some will take, uh, uh, some will be taken by the system itself. So, basically, uh, every task slot, right, at either map or use, uh, will take uh, two gigabytes. So I can have up to 25 slots, right? Then, and that that's a provisioning uh, <clears throat> for. Uh, uh, for all those uh, services running without uh, interaction with each other. But if I want uh, uh, average utilization high, I over provision that, I over subscribe. And they, uh, I would uh, <clears throat> assign 28 tasks instead of uh, 25. Mm -hmm. But, and that's the trade off when all the resources at uh, peak time are. <clears throat> uh, are working, uh, uh, the, the 
the different parts of, uh, of uh, the system of that node will start fighting with each other, uh, struggling for resources, and uh, <clears throat> particularly HBase doesn't like to be starved and uh, may crash. So, uh, so that's, uh, that's the problem. And uh, <clears throat> one of the solution is uh, if you had a way to better isolate the resources, uh, you could go with more aggressive resource uh, allocation. Uh, and we'll see how, how we approach to this. So, as I mentioned, two problems, right? Uh, I.O. bound <coughs> uh, workloads and uh, that trade-off uh, in provisioning. So, we decided to start and uh, try to uh, eliminate the I.O. bound workload. Improving I/O. How do you do that? Of course, you use uh, <coughs> uh, something faster than drives, and uh, these days it's Flash or RAM. So we, we, we ran two sets of uh, benchmarks. Uh, in one, in both, we use we, we use Flash, but uh, the, in the second one that uh, includes um, HBase, uh, <coughs> HBase was uh, sort of. A, caching mechanism so that you could serve data directly from RAM with the HBase. And, uh, that, that makes uh, things run faster. In the first, uh, in the first uh, set of benchmark, we just used uh, plain HDFS, <coughs> uh, and we used uh, the simplest benchmark <coughs> for HDFS, which is called test DFSIO. So what it does now, it's, uh, <coughs> it, uh, um, it measures performance of writes, sequential reads, appends, and we recently added, uh, specifically for, uh, for that study, uh, ran random reads, uh, uh, random reads, me measuring of random reads performance. Uh, DFSIO is a MapReduce job. Uh, the map uh, actually produces all those I.O. requests. Uh, basically reading uh, every map task reads or writes into a single file and uh, <clears throat> calculates the, uh, the, 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 the throughput. Uh, then it outputs the, thru the throughput and single reducer uh, aggregates all the information and produces you uh, the average throughput of, uh, of, the job, uh, of, um, of all the maps. So basically, if you want uh, to increase the number of files you are processing at the same time simultaneously, then you increase the number of mappers in DFSIO. <clears throat> Random reads. So <clears throat> this is sort of a new feature specifically for, uh, for that stat study. Uh, it's in this JIRA. We, of course, have a JIRA for that. <clears throat> Uh, so, there are three types of random reads. Uh, first is um, <coughs> straightforward re random reads. When you randomly select an, uh, uh, an offset and read, uh, for example, one kilobyte of data from that offset, then you switch to another random apps, uh, offset and read one kilobyte of data, and you go until you uh, read uh, <coughs> the amount of bytes you were supposed to read. So <clears throat> that's a random read, and uh, one disadvantage of that, that sometimes you hit, uh, uh, you, your, your reads intersect, so you hit the cache. And we want to avoid that, because Flush really stresses, uh, g gives, you, gives you a better performance of random reads. So in order to avoid those uh, 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 read-ahead caching, we introduced backward read. If you read backward, there is no read-ahead caching, so you always hit uh, call data. Uh, and we introduced skip read. That is, uh, you know what, what your read-ahead uh, <clears throat> window is. So you skip ahead of that and read call data again. So those were you know, just <clears throat> things we could come up uh, in order to avoid uh, <clears throat> hot data. Because in, in sequential reads and write, we don't see much uh, uh, increase on, in performance. So when, when you tune it correctly, then all the three uh, <clears throat> give uh, very similar re results. And that means that uh, we're, we're doing really random reads. 
the benchmark environment for TFS IO. So we use Hadoop 1 and HBase uh, 92. Uh, we had one master node uh, <clears throat> and uh, running name node and job tracker. And we have three slaves, uh, slaves that uh, have data nodes and uh, task trackers. So typical uh, configuration. Uh, we have we had uh, eight core hyperthread processors, 24 four gigabyte from drives, four, uh, four one terabyte uh, uh, drives. Sorry, 24 gigabyte of RAM, and uh, standard one gigabyte uh, GPPS network. So DFS IO data set was uh, overall uh, <clears throat> size is 10 gigabyte. It is split into 72 files. That means that we can run 72 mappers simultaneously on that, uh, on that cluster <clears throat> and uh, measure the performance. Uh, total data read for random read, you, you, you should not read the whole data, right? Uh, from, from the file. So we read seven gigabyte of it. Uh, and single read is one megabyte. And we used and we measured uh, performance with uh, uh, different number of concurrent readers, starting from three, which is one reader per, uh, per data node, and ending with 72, which is uh, 24 readers per, uh, per node. So this is how uh, how uh, how the this is the behavior we have seen on the cluster. So basically, the hard drive uh, the hard drive cluster uh, stabilizes and doesn't go, uh, and the performance uh, remains the same because you hit the uh, disk limit at that point. And flash is uh, linearly goes up. Uh, so we didn't saturate uh, our. Uh, <clears throat> our flash arrays. So it was good. And since we removed sort of uh, <clears throat> the contention uh, on the IO, we decided to go with uh, YCSB and try to see what, what, the, what, what the performance will be. <clears throat> so what's YCSB? Uh, Cloud serving benchmark. Uh, <clears throat> It provides a um, uh, <clears throat> load on uh, on the edge, sorry, on a storage cluster, on a distributed storage cluster. Why? why uh, uh, usually, it's used for measuring edge base, but it also can be used to compare edge base and other uh, non 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 no SQL databases uh, and uh, traditional relational databases works with Cassandra, Baltimore, uh, <clears throat> many other things. So data represented uh, as a table with some uh, <clears throat> fixed size uh, fields uh, uh, in it, uh, and uh, they are identified by unique keys, which is important for, uh, for uh, non-SQL databases, for HBase. There are four main operations there, very simple. Uh, the insert a new record, uh, read a record, update a record, which is a write, <clears throat> and scan uh, scan a uh, range of uh, records. So scan means that you uh, <clears throat> that you scan a consequent uh, uh, a consequent segment of records uh, in in the key range from key x one through key x two. So. <clears throat> So it's the same environment. Uh, we used exactly the same environment. We had to we, we, we added HBase master on the master node and uh, Zookeeper, and we added region server for every uh, for every slave node. <clears throat> so in this case, we also uh, added a variation to our configuration. So uh, we're using PEMs and we're trying to uh, uh, utilize. <clears throat> Uh, uh, utilize the environment with, uh, with uh, those VMs. So we tried two, three, and four VMs per node in, uh, in this configuration, and we'll see what the results are. Uh, we ran a uh, data, uh, data set for YCSB was uh, <clears throat> two data sets, 
uh, 10 million records and 30 million records. So 10 million records is more uh, <clears throat> internal memory load. And with 30, 30 million records, we hit, uh, uh, we, we're having more I.O. So that's why it was necessary to have both of them. Uh, while we're running this, uh, DSTAT is running and uh, collecting data from, I mean, simple, simple tool, tool DSTAT, it's just collecting uh, utilization of different resources on the cluster. So in YCSB, you can, <coughs> Uh, you can uh, define the percentages of uh, operations for your workload. So how it works, you first uh, do a data load, and this is 100% uh, inserts, and then you run one of your uh, uh, workloads with specified percentages. So we chose these three workloads. Uh, on the data load, we did not expect uh, any improvements with flash, I mean, marginally. Uh, <clears throat> this is a pure uh, write load, so you wouldn't expect anything uh, unusual here. Reads with heavy inserts. So we're measuring read performance, why there is a lot of uh, inserts. Why? Because in that case, reads are cold in most cases, in many cases, <clears throat> because there is a huge insert, uh, uh, insert, uh, <clears throat> insert traffic, and uh, if you do it on hard drives, then uh, there's lots of seeks. Basically, you write, you seek, you read, you seek. So that was an interesting sort of uh, <clears throat> workload to consider. And short range scan, scans are, uh, you know, typical, uh, typical <clears throat> uh, read scenario. They have a little bit of inserts just to make sure that we uh, don't do scans all, all, all the time. So. Uh, short range scan is is basically an, 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 an analogy of uh, random read for HBase. So this is uh, <clears throat> the throughput that we have seen. If you, if you see on those graphs, uh, you see that um, <clears throat> uh, black is flash. Uh, for for uh, for data load, there is marginal, uh, as we expected, marginal improvement uh, with flash. Um, <clears throat> With uh, reads uh, over inserts, uh, there is a substantial improvement uh, for read performance and uh, short range scans, random reads are really good with flash. Okay. So now we decided to uh, <clears throat> vary a number of uh, VMs. First of all, we noticed we started from physical node, no VMs, or one, v, one VM, uh, <clears throat> for that matter. And we noticed that if we add VMs, every VM added uh, gives us 20% uh, uh, advantage in, in performance. So <clears throat> we see, uh, so those are lines for different number of VMs on the cluster. So there's th still three nodes, but more VMs. Uh, <clears throat> And we are trying to run uh, uh, multiple concurrent threads, increasing the number of concurrent threads. And we see that the physical cluster is flat, as we, we have seen before, but uh, <coughs> VMs are, uh, uh, VM clusters are, are, are going uh, higher. Latency is, uh, is really, <coughs> is really a distinguishing story. I didn't plot here uh, two more points for physical, uh, for physical cluster because it goes straight up, it increases, uh, uh, it, 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 it doubles for every, uh, for every next point. So, so if, you, if I plotted the whole, the whole thing, we'll, we'll just flat here. So I, I didn't want to, <clears throat> I wanted uh, the difference in, uh, in this be uh, recognizable as well. Yes. There's a bit of an anomaly that the uh, latency with the six and nine VMs yeah. cross over with each other. Right. What would that be? So, it's the experiment. Uh, it's. Uh, <clears throat> I know there was some an anomaly. I, I I could have flattened it, but okay. <laughs> that that's what uh, you know the actual data says. 
Okay. And the most interesting part, uh, part of this uh, th was the CPU utilization. Again, we're looking at the physical cluster and we see that uh, <clears throat> uh, this gray area, we're looking at the gray area. Gray area is idle CPU utilization. So uh, idle and weight basically we're, 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 what we're interested in because idle and weight, weight is IO, it's stable, it's 1% in both cases. Uh, idle is huge in the physical node cluster. Uh, on virtualized cluster, we, <coughs> uh, we uh, achieve much, uh, much better average utilization. Uh, at peaks, we have seen almost 100%. So, <coughs> because, uh, I mean, jobs are starting, finishing, so there, there are always peaks there. So, sometimes you see 100%. And looks like uh, that's the way to go. And the last third experiment, uh, third workload that we considered on uh, the age-based cluster was 40% reads with 55% insert. So this is what I told: we're measuring reads when in present of lots of writes. And we have seen basically the same picture. Uh, we ran it for uh, two data sets. This is more or less uh, <clears throat> uh, measuring performance of HBase itself, uh, serving data from cache. And that involves more IOs because you cannot, uh, uh, we couldn't fit all 30 million records in, in memory. <clears throat> um, the latency is high. So this is, this is a reverse picture, right? It's not throughput, it's latency. So uh, for disk latency is much higher. And here are some conclusions. <clears throat> For HDFS, uh, sequential, uh, <clears throat> sequential disks handle sequential IO very well. I don't think we need to switch to uh, still expensive flush storage at this point if, uh, your, uh, if your workloads are mostly sequential. If you have lots of random reads, that's where flash storage uh, <clears throat> Uh, kicks in and uh, it definitely out outperforms disks. For uh, uh, HBase, write-only workloads are not data loading, for example, uh, uh, are not uh, are not <clears throat> very interested. Uh, you cannot do a, a lot of uh, interesting things with uh, Flash for that type of load. Um, I think that one. Of those, those were expected results, uh, sort of. <clears throat> the use of um, uh, multiple VMs was not so expected result, uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh, the results show that, uh, the benchmarks show that uh, using VMs can uh, utilize your uh, hardware, your CPU, much better than uh, <clears throat> regular drives. We also showed that uh, uh, random reads, not only random reads uh, are optimized with VMs but, uh, and flash, combination of uh, virtualization and uh, uh, flash storage, but also reads in presence of lots of writes. And that is a more wider uh, use case uh, in, in, many, in many applications, right? Random reads probably are not very, uh, very popular, but reading a lot when you're also writing is a typical uh, workload. <clears throat> so in my opinion, virtualization serves two main functions here. First of all, you increase utilization of your resources so you can uh, <clears throat> uh, use less resources to compute or compute more on the same resources you have. Uh, and also, uh, the second uh, important part is isolation. When you need to provision your cluster for uh, strict SLA uh, requir uh, requirements, uh, then you can use, uh, then your VMs will be isolated. They will not uh, <clears throat> try to interfere with each other. And you can provision your clusters more aggressively. Time for questions. 
Yes, please. So you had a physical setup of four machines, and when you did the virtualization, you had kind of what, six, nine, 12 VMs on each of those four. Really. So what was the distribution of the main nodes and how you, what you had as a master node to kind of your trade node? Did you always go and have one master node, or did you also end up running multiple? Multiple master nodes? Yeah. Yeah, in production, of course, you, you will want to separate those masters. Uh, you want to run main node on a single node, and job tracker on a single node. Uh, <coughs> uh, H-based master, Zookeeper, Zookeeper usually occupy the same node. <coughs> Zookeeper doesn't occupy the same node. It should be distributed on three other nodes <laughs> for, uh, <coughs> for, in order to provide consensus. But yes, in production cluster, you want that, that was the point uh, for, 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 this, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, for this benchmarking because uh, we didn't care about uh, performance of the master for this one. Uh, what virtualization technology did you use? Like, what was your hypervisor? Because I feel like that. So that was VMware. VMware? Yes, I think so. Okay. See, just here, the old, the three word. Uh, how did you divide up the resources? Did you just split up the memory more or less evenly? Yeah, so, so we, 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 why, why, for example, we used only four VMs per node? Because we had only four drives on the node. And we so it was one drive per VM? Yes, okay. one drive per VM. Uh, but, but, but memory wise, yes, it's it. Fresh. Sure. <clears throat> did you use Serengeti at all, or did you just roll your own no, uh, no, we didn't use Serengeti. Uh, it was it was announced a little bit before that, so we didn't have a chance to, <clears throat> to play with it. Okay. 